Hey, what is up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today, what in the heck are we gonna do? Uh, if you take a look at your content objective, we are going to perform stoichiometric calculations, this time involving percent yield. As always, breaking it down a little bit for you, we're first gonna distinguish between two things, theoretical yield and actual yield, and then two, we're gonna use those ideas of actual yield and theoretical yield to calculate what is called percent yield. Woo! I am so excited. Can't we do chemistry all the time? Okay, so to wrap your mind around these ideas of actual yield and theoretical yield, um, I want you to take a look at the image that you see on your screen. Uh, theoretically, if I wanted to make some cookie monster cupcakes, they may look like this. However, when I actually make these cupcakes, they look more like this. Nailed it through the wind like a boss. Or let's say I wanna make a hedgehog cake. I mean, who wouldn't want to make a hedgehog cake? It sounds amazing, pointy, but still amazing. Theoretically, it would turn out like this. Actually though, we would get something more like this. Boom, nailed it. So as you think about these terms of theoretical yield and actual yield, uh, keep in mind these beautiful images. Basically it's about what should you expect to get versus what do you actually get? All right, so the big terms that you need to know for today's video is first our theoretical yield. And this is just the maximum amount of product that can be produced from a given amount of reactant. So in theory, if everything goes perfectly, uh, how much should we expect to get? But then we actually perform this in the lab. And for a variety of reasons, uh, the actual yield uh, is what we actually get from a reaction. And very rarely is the actual yield the same as the theoretical yield. There's a lot of reasons why we won't get the theoretical yield when working in the lab. Sometimes the reaction will create what's called an equilibrium where the reaction proceeds in not only the forward, but the reverse direction. And so you're never gonna get your theoretical yield. Sometimes we're working with volatile chemicals that evaporate. And so we're not gonna get, theoretically, how much we should get because some of it has escaped. Or maybe we're working with something where we're transferring volumes or transferring masses. And it's really difficult to transfer everything without leaving some of it behind. And so, for a variety of reasons, recognize that your actual yield is probably gonna fall short of your theoretical yield. But in science, we don't care. Uh, all we need to do is report what our percent yield is. In other words, what is uh, the relationship between what we actually got, what we actually yielded in the lab, to what theoretically we should have gotten. And again, that is simply known as our percent yield. What did you actually get in the lab versus theoretically? And as we'll learn, actual yield is gonna come from experimentally, what do you get? Theoretical yield is gonna be your pen to paper calculations, your stoichiometry calculations. In theory, what should you get? And we're done.